The energy standards have had an amazing impact on energy use in California homes. In fact, if you were to look at a typical three-bedroom, 1,700-square-foot home that was built before 1977, that would have used about $2,700 annually in heating and cooling costs. That same home built to today's standards would use about $700, or a 75% reduction. Now, insulation and how you install that insulation is really critical to a home's performance. And with me today is Rick Jitwood, who is an energy consultant who spent a lot of his career doing research on energy-efficient housing. And Rick, you guys did the field research that was responsible for the compliance credit. How many homes did you look at? We looked at 60 homes spread out all over the state. We used infrared thermography to actually analyze the performance of the ceiling and wall insulation. And what did you find? Well, the biggest performance factor that we found in all the homes was air movement issues through the insulation. We had always been told that to leave an air gap between the facing on the insulation and the drywall actually improved performance. We called it a dead air space. But what we found with the analysis is that it wasn't really a dead air space. Air was moving through that, hurting the performance of the insulation, usually with convective currents. We know that if we have a wall that's 25 to 30 percent framing, that substantially reduces the wall's performance because you have a lot more wood in it. Now, in terms of the compliance credit, tell me how that affects the model. In the 2005 standards, that assembly will model at about an R8. The reduced performance is due to two things, of course. The increased amount of wood in the assembly and also poor installation quality. The, the loss of performance due to installation quality is mostly air movement through the insulation due to voids and gaps. Convective losses. Exactly. One of the reasons I think most people would believe that we're putting more lumber in homes today is to make them have better storm performance or better seismic performance. Um, but you really don't have to sacrifice safety for energy improvement. Is that correct? Uh, that's true. When we look at the framing factor in areas that don't have those hazards, lower seismic zones, we still find the same framing factor. And uh, what is the difference you can possibly make up here? Well, because a lot of the increased framing factor is due to the architectural complexity in new homes, there's a lot more corners and bends and knee walls and just extra uh, aesthetic issues in homes. Um, a lot of it can be removed. Um, a lot of the framing in walls is just for backing for drywall. We have a home under construction in Northern California now that only has a 9.5% framing factor or 60% less than average. And that was done by using a single top plate, using a 24-inch on center uh, spacing between the studs, and actually selecting windows that fit in between the studs rather than putting the studs around the windows. Does that affect the aesthetics of the home, though? Um, it can, but they can also be designed around. What are some of the performance guidelines that you recommend for installers? Well, with wall assemblies, there's just a few simple guidelines that are required to make sure that the insulation performs properly. The first thing we have to do is start with an airtight cavity. Then we, when the insulation is installed, we have to make sure that it's in contact with the air barrier. So it needs to be in contact with the rigid surfaces, both on the front and the back, the sides and the top and the bottom, so on all six surfaces. Then we need to look out for gaps, voids, and compressions and make sure they are minimized or don't exist at all. In the ceiling, the performance factors are similar, but we only need to be in contact with the air barrier on one side, usually the ceiling drywall. And then again, watch for the right thickness and the right density on loose fill. Now, it's also a team approach with the builder. I mean, you really have to get involved, the framer, the architect, uh, everybody involved to make this work. Right. Because the house is a whole system, um, we need to involve things like the plumber. We need to make sure that he isn't installing the bathtub before the wall cavities behind the tub are insulated. Electricians can hurt the performance of, of the insulation depending on where they run the wiring. Um, the framers are critical in that they need to install hard covers and draft stops properly and continuously at the right location. So everybody does have to work together. Well, Rick, there are a lot of benefits to homeowners and builders. Let's start with the homeowner. What are your thoughts on that? The primary benefits to the homeowner is they're going to be a lot more comfortable when we get insulation in a home that performs well. They're also going to have, as you mentioned earlier, significantly lower energy operating costs. And you also had uh, done some research on a home where you could actually substantially reduce the size of the system involved. Tell us that's, about that. That's a primary benefit for the builder. When we get insulation that performs well, 
first we're able to accurately calculate the heat loads for the home, which lets us size heating and cooling equipment more accurately, and it can be substantially downsized. For example, there's a home in Reading right now that is about the size of this home we're standing in now, 2,400 square feet, and it only requires a ton and a half air conditioner to cool it in the summer. Wow. Uh, some obvious benefits for the builder. Yep. He doesn't have to buy as much equipment or maintain it. A lot of work went into this compliance standard. Tell me about the committee uh, and the stakeholders involved. Um, there was a large committee put together, and their mandate was to determine the most cost-effective balance between increasing the cost of the home and keeping that small and yet maximizing the performance of the insulation. And I think that a good job was done. NEMA was a, one of the committee members. Well, Rick, great information. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Well, how you install the insulation and the quality of that insulation goes a long way in making your home more energy efficient, comfortable, and it can also even improve the acoustical properties of your customers' homes.